Welcome to podcast number 42. Yep, here we go, another podcast. And uh, this podcast, again, comes off of uh, my request list as I've gone through my uh, requests. Uh, I realized that I've been uh, putting this one on the back burner. And given the time of the year, I think this is a great podcast to, uh, to jump into, which is the five reasons why we crash a motorcycle. This podcast has a sponsor of, yep, guess what? I got a sponsor. Um, I've had offers for other people to sponsor my podcast. And quite frankly, I, uh, I turned them down. Can you believe that? Uh, I, I did turn down, um, a couple of sponsor opportunities, mainly because I didn't feel they're good for our sport. I didn't believe fully in um, what was being offered and what the product was and what the intentions were. So, uh, I did say, no, this podcast is being sponsored by Mark DeGross at two fast track days. And uh, I like Mark. I've known Mark since Freddie Spencer days. Um, he's been Freddie Spencer school, very fast, uh, accomplished racer. And uh, Mark's in the track day business. And uh, Mark is trying to make our sport better. Uh, he's invested in me. He's invested in the sport. Um, and he takes to heart uh, all the things that uh, I, I work on. And uh, I, I want to help him. And uh, I think as you go to his track days, and you'll see that this is the sort of mentality that goes along with you know, apex cones. And again, this whole reason why we crash. So, um, Mark, I appreciate it. Uh, and it's helped growing our sport. And, uh, that's, that's the people that I want to support as well. So, okay, enough bullshit. Here we go. Five reasons why you crash. I originally was going to do five separate podcasts uh, on each one of the topics. And I decided that I'm going to, I am going to put them all into one. So this one might run a little bit longer, uh, but that's okay. It needs to. And, uh, we're, where this really started was uh, when I went to the when I went to the Freddie Spencer School, and uh, you know Nick Einach was up at the front of the school, and um, Nick goes, "Hey, here are the reasons why we crash." And even though I had crashed for every single one of those reasons, it wasn't until they were they were drawn out in front of me, written in in words in front of me, for me to see and internalize, did I get it? And it was like, oh my gosh, yes, I've crashed because I didn't have the right focus. Yes, I actually was too aggressive with the throttle, picked up the front of the bike, and then tucked the front on the throttle. Yes, I've tried rushing corner entries, run wide, and, and had an issue, right? I've done all these things. But it wasn't until that I saw them written down in front of me, or in this case, until you hear them, do you go, oh, now, now I get it. So every day that I ride, I still will go through these. If we're doing a, a three-day RIC program, we say these things every day. We have to, right? We have to understand essentially what the consequences are uh, for what we're doing. We have to know why we crash. The motorcycle is only as good as the inputs that we put into it. And so realize that uh, typically, yes, it's always us. It's always us and our inputs on the bike. I'll be very clear. Yes, there are lightning strike crashes. There are things that are out of your control somebody takes you out there's oil on the track you're riding a ducati no that okay that one um there are mechanical crashes as well so there are things that are out of your control and there's there's just not much that you can do about them and they're lightning strike crashes right Th those those ones i get that's not what i'm talking about today what i'm talking about today are the five reasons why we 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 crash motorcycles the five reasons why i've crashed so Let's really just dive right into it. Um, I'm going to read through them, and then I'm going to go go back into each one and uh, and dive into the the specifics. Right. So first one, lost or lack of focus. Second one, abrupt inputs. Third one, rushing corner entries. Fourth one, repeating a mistake. Fifth one, overconfidence. Those are the reasons why we crash. That's why we crash, and and everything fits into each one of those categories somehow, somewhere. So. Let's get into um, let's get into each one of these and and start thinking about what they really mean and what we can do. So notice how the first one says um, lack of focus or lack of a plan, lack of being in the moment, lack of being present, and that's what it's really all about. That's why, as um, uh, you've heard in some of my other podcasts, right? That's why you've got triggers to get in triggers for focus and triggers to get back in focus. Riding a motorcycle is is the bottom line is it's a it's a dangerous thing so 
we need to be thinking about getting ourselves in a position to intake everything that's going on, um, getting our eyes into play, being in a proactive, proactive decision-making process. So let's, let's, let's look at that even more, right? So first one is a lack of focus, lack of focus, right? You're not in the moment. You're, you're, you're riding around, whether it's street riding, track riding, you're riding around and not thinking about what you're doing. So that right there is, is very, very difficult. And then even, a, even the loss of focus, right? That's the refocus trigger that we, that we need, right? So think about one, you're not even in the moment. And then if you were in the moment and you get out of the moment, it's putting yourself back in the moment. So how do we, how do we mitigate that, right? How do we fix that? First one is have a plan for your riding. Have a plan, have a goal. It, and it might be a short-term goal like, oh, this session, I'm gonna go work on my break release or um, I have a new shock setting and I'm gonna go try it out. Have something that puts your brain in the game, right? Have something. And, and I like the idea of having one thing because if you want that, if you want that 100%, 100% result, you have to give it that one focus at 100%. So give yourself something that puts you in the game. Put, give yourself something that you're gonna focus on and then turn that focus on whether it's before you turn your key on, um, whether if you, if you watch my videos, I'll roll out a hot pit, I stand up on the foot pegs, I sit back down, I'm in the moment. I am only focused on my, my task at hand. And then again, as we ride, um, we look at all of our different report cards to keep that focus going, right? So loss or lack of focus, let's, let's get ourselves a plan going, let's get ourselves a trigger to turn that plan on, and let's get a trigger for the refocus as well. And then let's use all those report cards that we have. Second one, abrupt inputs. Yeah, I, the whole stab, grab, flick, throw, toss, hack, uh, all that does not get better as you go quicker. And uh, it's something that, that we look about and I've, I've talked to a lot of writers um, about. And it's shocking how subtle your inputs have to be when you're on the edge. So if you're thinking that your sport the sport, you have to be more aggressive to go faster. It's actually the opposite. The quicker you go, the more subtle your initial inputs have to be. Overall of your inputs as well, but mainly those initial inputs. A couple of things that I want, I want to talk about with the abrupt inputs. Realize that a lot of times our inputs are abrupt. It's because they're late, right? So in other words, you become reactive to something. So when you become reactive, then you haven't trained your brain to be smooth with it. So by one, seeing the situation early, having a proactive thought process, your inputs won't be abrupt. I can almost guarantee if you're late, you're abrupt. So thinking about um, trying to be way more um, proactive with that, and it'll give you so much more time available to make that happen. So thinking about with abrupt inputs is working on that initial 5%. Start it there. Start with your initial 5% of your inputs. Give yourself time to, to initiate that 5%. Doesn't mean you're going slow. It just means you're controlling your actions. So the initial 5%. Then you can work on the last 5%. Then you can work on the initial 5% of your throttle. Then you can work on the initial 5% of your body movements. And man, does it just slow everything down. So realize as you go quicker, you're not gonna get more abrupt. Scott Russell talks a lot about that. And I just love what Scott says. And having ridden with Scott, especially when, uh, you know, for the couple of corners, I get to watch Scott uh, when he's hauling ass, is his um, initial throttle is better. It's better. That's all there is to it. His 1% to 2% throttle is better than mine. His 2 to 3% throttle is better than mine. But then what happens there is because the tires flex, right? The, 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 the shock has got some force come back into it. The he's got more contact patch is that he then gets the wide open throttle sooner. The rider that goes to 10% throttle then has to roll back off of it and then hold that 10% has now just lost out on a lot of forward, you know, positive acceleration. So abrupt inputs. Let's really work on controlling all of those inputs, especially those initial inputs. What's your plan for that? You think you're abrupt, right? Think you're abrupt? Work on 5%. Just say, I'm going to work on all my 5%. Rushing corner entries. So rushing corner entries 
is um, we think about this in, in our sports very simple, right? Our sport is about acceleration. Our sport is about putting ourselves in a position to accelerate. This lesson came and smacked me straight in the forehead when I got to ride with Freddie Spencer. And with Freddie, and you know, we've if you why if you read any of Nick Einach's articles, um, he just had a really good article about this uh, on Cycle World. Was um, we talked about riding with Freddie, and we'd ride with Freddie, and initially on the entries, we pretty much had him covered, but he would start building his exits, working on his exits, and pretty soon, literally, he was gone. Right? It's just like, what the hell happened? He never rushed his entries. What, and I'm not saying get into the entry too slow. I'm just saying, don't get into the entry over 100% of you or your bike's ability that screws up your exit. So rushing corner entries. And yes, you have to build brake pressure. Yes, you gotta get the bike in there, but don't screw the exit up. And of course, until we build those habits, until we build those report cards, you know, let the entry come to you and work on those exits. So if you're trying to rush the entry into something that, that doesn't last as long as the exit, Man, we got to work on that. We got to get our, we got to get our sport turned around. Fourth reason: repeating a mistake. One of the things that I like to think about um, that that certainly helps me is that if I'm on a uh, whatever a 21 turn track, a 15 turn track. If I'm on a 21 turn track, I have 21 opportunities a lap to tell me how am I doing? How am I doing? How did I get to my entry apex? How did I get to my exit apex? What control am I using at that? What, what control am I using when? Right. So I can start to literally see how am I doing? How much neutral throttle do I have? Um, is there weight in my hand at turn in? So I, I can I can look at all these things and literally every single corner give myself a report card. How am I doing? And by having those report cards and of course having techniques and habits available to fix them, then that will make your job a lot easier as well. So the main thing that we look at, especially as instructors, is we look at how you're getting to your apex. Are, one, are, are you on your apex? Two, do you have the right direction at the right time with your apex? Three, what control am I using when at the apex? So that right there tells us how you're doing. If I'm missing apexes, right, I, I, that's not going to get better. And that's why we work on establishing precision as soon as we go out. Right, making sure we get the bike in in the in the right place at the right time. Repeating a mistake, man, is this is this is this a big deal? Couple thing, couple things on this as well. Mistakes happen when there's no plan. So think about that, right? If you're if you're just out riding around and you're not you're not engaged, well, yeah, it's really easy to make a mistake. And this starts the whole big thing of being technically based versus emotionally based, right? If we have those techniques, we have our eyes and focus, we've got habits of what we're supposed to do and when, boy, does it make this so much easier. So the last thing on this is um, if you make a mistake, get over it, get over it. Um, yeah, start your lap on the next apex, right? Start your lap on the next corner. Don't worry about it, screwing up your whole session or whatever the issue is just get it done and over with. The best example that I can think of of this, again, was Scott Russell. And it was Scott, <clears throat> 1995, Daytona, crashes on lap two, bunch of world champions in the race. He's thinking, oh my gosh, I just screwed this up. He says, his mantra then became, um, if the bike starts, I'm winning this race. So Scott said he got going, you know, got the bike restarted, finally got the bike restarted, gets going, kind of puts himself you know, sits himself back on the seat, checks to see where all his controls are. And then he said he actually went a little bit slower to get to the next apex. He got to the next apex, boom. He was he just he just basically started his lap all over again, right? Like it never happened. So you make a mistake like that, repeat a mistake, get over it, right? Just just get over it and get on that next apex. The last reason why we crash, overconfidence. Ooh, this one, this one is a tough one. Uh, because we start, things start going really well. Everything, everything is just great. Um, you can't believe how well uh, your tires are holding. You can't believe how well you're riding. Your eyes are working so good. Bikes accelerating great, out driving everybody. And that confidence that you just built, well, you got it for a reason. You got it because you're doing all those things right. So it's 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 difficult um, to to have to talk yourself back into technique. 
And because what, what, what's overconfidence? Overconfidence is emotion is what that is. And it's so hard because it's such a, it's such a good feeling. But you have to remember, you got that overconfidence. You got that confident feeling. You got the control feeling that you like because of all those techniques. And this is, this is really where, this is really where it, it, it all starts, right? This is, I mean, you got to that point. Now the hard work comes fighting that overconfidence and even working on more intricate techniques. So overconfidence, you got there for a reason, right? There's reasons why the bike does the things that it does. There's reasons why everything is happening and, and, and working so well. And uh, I'll give you a quick story on that. So Adam Bronfman and uh, the Rick days, um, Adam was riding a BMW 1000 and doing really well on it and um, started going quick, very quick. And what Adam did is um, as his pace came up, it wasn't as precise as it needed to be, but yet he felt great about it. He's like, what do you mean? My lap time's really good. But it wasn't on a trajectory or pathway that was going to get better. So Adam, Adam, we watched videos and I had to, I had to point, I pointed all that out to him. So what Adam did is he took a step back and he's like, you know what? You're right, right? I, I need to go back and get even more precise with my technique. And so he parked the BMW, got an RR6 with street tires, and basically rode an R6 with street tire for the next four or five months working on technique, realizing that, wow, I felt great. I felt great with all the things, but then I started running up against a plateau. And even though I, I felt good about it, but I reached my plateau again. So I'm going to go back and work on, on my technique. And now that he's done that, the, the pace is so much higher and, um, and uh, it, you know, riding even, even technically far superior than he did before. So it's so hard to fight that overconfidence because you're like, dude, I'm doing everything right. Well, you are, it, but, but that's the part, that's the time that we let, we let our focus uh, lapse. So overconfidence. You got to fight it. It's bitten me in the ass. So five reasons why we crash motorcycles. That's it. That's it. And um, uh, again, I wanted to put all of these in one podcast. So hopefully you're listening to this when you go to the track. Hopefully you're l- listening to this on your commute, right? And you realize that, that all of these have to work together and you have to hear these things every single day. Again, I want to thank Market Too Fast um, for for taking these things to heart as well. And these are things that you'll hear him talk about at his track days, the, the five reasons why we crash motorcycles. And uh, that's why he's also trying to build a better sport, right? Keep us all in the sport and help grow our sport. Copyright 2017, Ken Hill Coaching, All Rights Reserved.